This is where the atheists gather. This is home. This is LATV 2.0. Hi, this is Amy with a Y from Secular Soup. Hi, this is Aaron Ross. Hi, this is Candace Gorham. Hi, this is Andrew Torres. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Davis. Hello, this is Dr. Daryl Ray. Hi, this is Dr. Hector Garcia. Hi, this is Mike Wiseman of The Bible Says What. Hi, this is Thomas Westbrook of Holy Coid. Hey, this is Robert Stanley from the Right to Reason podcast. Hi, I'm Steve Grumbine. I'm the host of Macro and Cheese. <laughs> I'm Dave Fitzgerald. And I'm Dana Fitzgerald. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> We can start again. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm David Fitzgerald. And I'm David Christ. And we took a left at the valley. And then I masturbated after that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud to be an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I say it. I say it's ignorance and you just call it faith and unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. Coming at you from so BC, Alligator, Florida, and Cold Hanger, Texas, this is Left of the Valley 2.0. My name is Kevin, and when Miley Cyrus dances nearly noon and licks a hammer, it's called art. But when I do it, I get kicked out of Home Depot. <laughs> Joining me as usual is the team that realized that potatoes make fries, chips, and vodka. It's like the other veggies aren't even trying. Exactly. Vodka's <laughs> light. She was in line behind a guy buying condoms, and when his card was when his card was declined, she said he was cock blocked by Visa. Sabrina. Hello. <laughs> and he'll tell you that, And he'll tell you that dudes that clearly can't breathe in a mask have never gone down on a woman long enough for her to finish. Friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, oh, guys, you're bringing back. it. You're bringing it. <laughs> And this show is brought to you by our patrons. You too can become a patron. Go to www.patreon.com slash LETV and you can help us grow the show. Oh, perfect. I guess the first thing we got to do is a warm welcome to a new team member, Hertzy Hertz. Hey, welcome, dear. Hello. Thank you. You have no idea what you just got yourself into. Oh, not a clue. Love it. (laughs) The good news is you didn't really watch the show or listen to the show before, so. Yeah, it's going to be a total surprise. Uh, (laughs) All right. So uh, we were supposed to have Bernard Laborel on, but some some mishap happened there. So we're going to have a different kind of show today. Uh, We are going to do a baloney detection kit exercise today. So that's going to be interesting, but that's going to be in the second half of the show. But first, let's do our usual chit-chat. Okay, um, uh, we got bad news, uh, unfortunately, Again? to start. Oh, yeah, we always saw with bad news. Uh, Is it from the States by any chance? Uh, not really. Oh. Um, as we predicted on this show, a new COVID strain has been... Uh, Omicron? Yeah, it's known as uh, SARS-CoV-2-B11529. It's also been uh, nicknamed the Omicron variant. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, punched out out of South America. Um, it's a heavily mutated form. Uh, that's been basically putting uh, the scientific community under alert here really, really badly. Um, so what's happening with the vaccines against this? Is it we don't know at this point. It's too early to say. Uh, it's spreading quickly in South America, uh, South Africa. Sorry, uh, and there's already two cases that are confirmed in the UK and in Hong Kong. Okay. So um, yeah, this uh, virus, was, uh, this variant of COVID, was first identified in Botswana, and. Uh, Apparently, it is heavily, heavily mutated, and at this point, it we have no idea what it means for people that have already had the vaccine. So it could be another novel virus, basically. I it it could have it could have uh, Omicron essentially has a potential to basically nullify all the efforts we have done to this far yeah. to uh, eradicate COVID. Maybe I should listen to the news more and hear these things. <laughs> <laughs> I just so that's that. I just yeah, that every. <laughs> go ahead, Brent. Oh no, you good? You good? You good? I, was say, I just know every Futurama fan and I are going, oh, so is it from Percy I-8? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I on the radio. I'm like, what the hell? Is it from Omicron Percy I-8? I am Lur. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get uh, it. Give me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, they say it's got like uh, twice as many mutations as like the, uh, the previous Delta variant, which mm-hmm. had more mutations than the other. It's got like 30. 
And we've talked about this before. We said, you know, when you get a heavily unvaccinated population, yeah. uh, this is what is a petri dish to help these uh, viruses mutate. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw this with the Delta variant that happened in India and the uh, Gamma variant that happened in Brazil. And um, we were we were saying at the time the U.S. has a, a lot of population that is not vaccinated. Still, there's a possibility that there would be a mutation that happening in the U.S. This is Omicron happened apparently in South Africa. So mm -hmm. <sighs> this is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how many times do you have to say this? Guys, I, get yeah, vaccinated. <laughs> it's know? scary. It is scary. Um, uh, another news, there is a movement worldwide that, to recognize the rights to some animal species, to give human rights to them. Mm -hmm. I like heard it, about that. Yeah, so human rights can be given to other species that are they're deemed sapient and sentient. Um, and this is also the, uh, this is the same argument that I use for, also for abortion. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when you have a fetus, what do, they always say, uh, they, they always, uh, for abortion, they say, you know, uh, a fetus is human. Yeah, but it's not what about a human, it's whether it's a person. Mm -hmm. Right, and it, what, what makes a person is sentience and sapience, and as, as some of these countries right now, I've do, like for example in India, I believe they have uh, human rights attributed to dolphins, uh, because they recognize that say, uh, the, the, the species is uh, sentient and sapient enough to uh, to warrant these rights. Well, in the UK, they've declared that octopi, squids, and lobster crabs as sentient beings. So this is cool. interesting. Now, now, note here, I said sentient being, not necessarily sapient as well. So they don't. it's not like these octopi and all that are given human rights under the law at this point. Mm -hmm. But they recognize that these species are aware. They can feel pain. Well, they definitely can. Yeah, they can feel pain, pleasure, hunger, warmth, joy, comfort, excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in the UK, they've added uh, an amendment. Uh, amendment to their animal welfare sentience bill and the update actually came from an ex extensive report from the london school of economics and political science <laughs> so this is very interesting hmm. uh, so i mean i could see the octopus and everything but like really mean, shellfish, shellfish? I, I i was kind of surprised by that put them thing. in the same category come on now no <laughs> I mean, know how to like octopi know how to like sneak out of tanks well yeah but i mean this is this uh, yeah. we're talking about sentience here so I these know. creatures are aware now the, the octopi are much more smarter that's than true. the lobsters okay, yeah, yeah. right okay I'll, yeah, I I'll, we'll agree to that yeah but that's not what they're talking about here okay so it's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on because down the road if you were to say for example that you were to give human rights to lobsters for example what mm -hmm. does that mean for the industry right yeah I mean, we wouldn't be are, able to eat exactly these are all Actually, tons of human not rights necessarily violence. Oh. Um, because it's something that I, because I, I watch a lot of cooking shows and things like that. Um, one of the things that they've started doing with lobster, because it used to be you just put the lobster in the pot and then that's it. What they have started to do, um, and I think it really started in Britain, is basically you just basically dispatch the lobster immediately before you put it in the pot. So there's barely a second before it goes in. And it's like, well, that makes sense. Then it's not this huge painful death or whatever that we have been doing and it's just quick done in the pot that's it yes yeah, okay. um of course for us atheists it doesn't really matter because we're, we're ready to eat babies anyway so we'll, we'll, eat, <laughs> we'll eat lobster anyway we'll eat anything that comes under <laughs> I, honestly i'm not a lobster fan so you know you're welcome lobster so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens down the road uh, mm -hmm. like i said there's a lot of countries that are making moves toward that ecuador is one of them mm -hmm. uh, india is one of them uh i think japan also as well uh so it, I, it's gonna be a cool thing to keep an eye on um, in other news, uh, did you guys hear that NASA has launched a craft named DART? Now, DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, and it's heading for an asteroid called a Dimorphos. Um, it will take about 10 months to reach. Now, the mission is actually to crash into the rock and alter its course, hopefully. Now, warning, it's not like the asteroid is heading our way, it's going to kill us. It's not that. It's just this is a test to see if this can actually be done, right? Hmm. Um this uh, this craft Dart has lifted uh, atop a SpaceX Falcon Nine rocket, so it's in uh, working with uh, Elon Musk there. Of course, <laughs> um, the impact should happen in September twenty two. Uh, twenty two. Mm -hmm. uh, Dimorphos is only one hundred sixty meters across, um, or one hundred sixty yards across for American friends there. And Dart will crash at twenty four thousand kilometers an hour, about fifteen thousand miles per hour, if you wish, into it. <laughs> um, Dimorphos is actually uh, orbiting a 
D Dimos, which is a, another bigger rock, I guess, and NASA hopes to measure that the crash will actually divert the rock and change its orbit. And by these calculations, they can try to build some kind of response to a uh, a meteorite or an asteroid that would actually have a significant impact on the planet. Mm -hmm. Because right now we don't really have any way of defending. I mean, of course, these the, the, the stupid things like, oh, let's throw some nukes at them. That doesn't really work that way. Right. Why not? So, <laughs> well, because sometimes the composition of the rock, uh, <laughs> you know, could just shatter into a million smaller, more deadly fragments. So, uh, and okay, so, shows you what I know. So, so that's <laughs> just viewing this as playing a game of pool. You get something yeah, in the way, billions. you hit it with the cue ball, and yeah. you redirect the, the rock somewhere else. That's what that's the <laughs> way they're, they're looking at this. So, this is going to be really, really interesting to see this next year. So we'll keep an eye on that. Yes, definitely. Perfect. Okay. Okay.